What's up everybody? Bear with BearIndependent.com Today we're going to talk about, you guys seem like you're a little bit lower than usual. No, nope, that's as high as the tripod will go. Whatever, best intro ever, end cut. Start over. Hello and welcome to the Bear Independent channel. I am Bear of BearIndependent.com with the knife hands. Today we are talking about um, prepping on the edge of town. Why are we talking about that? QRF battle goats. No, that's not why. It's just there, there they are. We're talking about that because uh, it's been on my heart and on my mind lately that most of y'all don't live here. Uh, and I've not lived here my whole life either. A lot of my prepping was done in suburbalon, which is, you know, suburban Babylon. And uh, I know a lot of y'all live in suburbalon. In fact, we did a poll on Patreon a while back and said, hey, where do y'all live? And it was like in town, edge of town, rural, or so far back in the sticks they have to pipe the sunshine in. And uh, two thirds of our viewership on Patreon lives either urban or suburban and one third on the edge of town or rural like so. That means that there's two thirds of y'all that don't have an environment like this, uh, whether you aspire to have one or not. And by this, I don't mean random deck boards laying in the ground because it has refused to stop raining here in the Pacific Northwestern corner of Arkla, Texas, Homus. How's that for a mouthful? Um, but anyway, rooster must die. The edge of town the sweet spot that the edge of town can represent. I was actually discussing this with a client recently. My wife and I lament regularly that we cannot pick up the phone and order a freaking pizza. Or, hey man, give me two orders of General Tso's and a beef and broccoli, right? That does not happen here. That is not possible here. And I miss it. <laughs> I do miss it. It's nice to be able to say, yeah, I want a large white pizza and a Sicilian slice and give me some wings, right? And they're like, yeah, no problem. Be there in 20 minutes. That doesn't happen here. Two day, two day Amazon deliveries, more like seven to nine days here, okay? The post office barely knows where we are. So, but all that being said, some of the other considerations for living in town as well, other than, you know, Bear's uh, continuous pursuit of calories. Think about it. It can actually be much easier to attain one to five acres on the edge of town than 20, 60, 150 acres in the middle of nowhere. Um, there seem to be a lot more properties for sale that are a handful of acres on the edge of town than there are properties in the middle of nowhere. So that means if you're looking for property, you're probably going to find more of them on the edge of town with a smaller lot, you know, one to five acres than you are acreage out here. So you have more to pick from. Um, it seems less intimidating to a lot of people as well because, hey man, it's an acre. It's three acres. It's five acres. It's not 64 acres. And a lot of people are like, what would I ever do with 64 acres? Frankly, we daily use about three acres here. I probably weekly use about seven acres, set foot on seven acres. And if I didn't ruck my property regularly, I might never see the rest of it. Um, it's part of why I do ruck it. It's good to walk your fence lines. It's good to take note of who is or isn't coming across your property. And, oh, look, those deer, uh, deer prints are fresh and blah, blah, blah. Um, but we have a large enough piece of land that I might never see parts of it. Or it might be a long while since the last time I saw that piece of, pro of our property. And so the edge of town can be more attainable and less intimidating, right? Um, and there's a lot that you can get done on the edge of town. You know, look for a piece of land that doesn't have covenants, land use restrictions, HOAs, and get you some emotional support chickens, a bunch of them. I just found out in the state of Oklahoma that 50 chickens is enough to get you an agricultural tax exemption. 
We just bought 50 chickens in addition to the 492,000 my wife already has running around here. So, like, that's cool. Um, and then 50 chickens seems like a lot of chickens, but it's not all that much when your goal is in 11 weeks to, right? So, you can have some chickens. With those chickens, do the composty thing, do the raised beds thing, right? Maybe you find a piece of property that has a well or there's a creek on it, right? Now we're getting somewhere. You can have a little bit of decentralized gener um, power generation, whether that's wind or solar. <clears throat> Room to really grow a garden, a big garden, you know? Put some row crops in. Maybe have some sheep, have some goats. Um, you can still have that on the edge of town and not give up necessarily that good job or the convenience of my kid really wants to be on this basketball team or, um, you know, man, I just love wings delivered to my house. Okay. Or whatever. Now for me, that's not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be here. And I'm fully aware of that what I'm supposed to do is not necessarily what you are supposed to do. But being on the edge of town, I think is much better than being in the middle of the city. And towns vary, right? The edge of West Havistraw, New York is probably not a good place to be population density, right? But the edge of East Overshoe, Indiana, probably, it'd probably be okay, right? So it depends on where you're talking about. It all comes back to population density. But getting a five acre parcel on the edge of town that has high speed internet run to it so that we can all, you know, and stream Netflix and upload our favorite Instagram photos or whatever, and maybe get a, get a pizza delivered and have room for our sheep and our turkeys and our goats and our chickens. And maybe there's a nice little draw right down where these two ravines come together. I'm gonna sit right here with my Springfield 30-06 and just wait, right? Um, is not necessarily a bad thing. And in fact, I think it would be a considerable improvement for a lot of people within the sound of my voice. So don't count it out. There's a lot of opportunities for preppers there as well. Um, the edge of town is a much easier sell to a lot of people that aren't into preparedness. For example, one of the primary complaints that I hear when counseling with people is that my spouse is not on board with prepping. They do not, whether it's the husband or the wife, want to move out into the middle of nowhere. They don't want to live here. And let me tell you, a lot of people have come here and went, oh, this is in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people have come here and gone, this is a lot of work. This is more work than I thought it was. Yeah, and we're on grid. It's still a lot of work. There's always something to be done. There's a reason we call this place the land of almost. There's a reason there's deck boards laying right here. There's a reason that there's pallets of stuff on, I mean, okay? There's always work to be done. Always work to be done. So if you're not ready or interested, ready for or interested in this level of commitment, the edge of town is a much easier sell if you have a reluctant spouse as well um, that is not interested in living in an off-grid container home 42 miles off the paved road where you're just like, yes, prepper stuff. They're like, honey, I hate you. This is so stupid. Where am I gonna get my nails done? And you're like, Listen, we, we will put a room in the bunker specifically for you to do your nails, okay? A little bit easier of a sell to say, hey, you know what? Um, let's look at this four and a half acres with this old farmhouse that's been redone uh, on the edge of town. And they're asking 32000 less than what our in-town in home is valued at or whatever, right? So much more attainable, uh, lower commitment level, and you can still do the vast majority of the prepper things. And you're gonna bump into, because you're there on the edge of suburban meets rural, 
you're gonna bump into more rural people. You should make friends with those rural people because those people are probably gonna know a thing or two about growing food, about hunting, about firearms, about, hell, welding, how to change a tire. Oh, you got a roof leak, Bob? That's not, hey man, I'll come over, I'll help you deal with that. Um, they're a little bit more involved with their hands in the doing of on the land and they can help lead you in that if you have no experience in it. Uh, just good, self-reliant folk that it would be good for you to be friends with. And it's kind of like, it's an interim step in between, I live in the suburbs of North Dallas and I live in the middle of nowhere. Find the edge of town. So I just wanted to bring this to y'all today to, to let you know, not that you need my approval for your living situation, but I get this question often enough that I think that it requires a video. I think that it's a good plan in a lot of places, as long as you get the population density right. Again, the edge of town in Philly, no, um, you know, but the edge of town in, hell, I don't know, Woodward, Oklahoma, yes, yes, that is good, that is good, right? So, and it still allows you to engage in a lot of the homesteader stuff and a lot of the prepper stuff uh, without having the incredibly large financial and time and resource and energy commitment of a big old piece of land. Um, yeah, I'm interested in your productive comments down below. Shalom, y'all. Hit the button. All right, I'll hit the button. I'm so sorry. And cut. Shalom, y'all.